Today, we have a very special guest, Diane Conklin, who is an amazing rock star on our team. That's right. She is the newest addition of the Go Mobile's management team, Go Mobile Solutions management team. And today, you're going to see why. And you're going to see that Go Mobile is set to do big things with you, all of you, part of the community here. So what she's going to be talking about today is how to go from zero to six figures in 90 days. Have you ever had that thought? She is not only going to teach you some nuggets today that you'll be able to apply in your business, but I guarantee you, you will pick up on a thing or two, if not more, where you will be able to help level up the business of your clients. And that's what Diane is really known for, working with entrepreneurs like me, for instance, to help really come in and go big. And that's what we're planning to do. I've known Diane for over two decades now. I watched her be a CEO, COO, VP, entrepreneur, chief cook, bottle washer, you name it. I've seen her watch run seminar companies, infomercial companies, management companies, call centers, you name it. She's been in real estate investing. She's been in personal development. She's been in the coaching world, internet marketing. It's amazing how much experience Diane Conklin brings to the table, which is why as we're deciding to really go big in 2023, along with all of you, I've told you at the beginning of the year, I've hired and brought on and attracted the talent to make a Super Bowl run. That's what we're all doing today. That's what we're doing this year. We're making a Super Bowl run. And to do that, you gotta have the right team. It is my absolute honor and pleasure to introduce to you the newest member of the Go Mobile Solutions Management Executive Team. This is Diane Conklin. Thank you, Damien. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the uh, the accolades and the kind words. And let me just start by saying it's an honor uh, to be a part of the team. It's an honor to be a part of the organization that serves you guys so well. And I'll talk a little bit before we finish tonight about kind of what my vision is and what my goals are and some of that. Um, but it's an honor to be here. It's an honor to share time with you. It's an honor to be a part of the team and to be a part of something on a daily basis that uh, involves somebody that I admire and respect and and have for so many years. So thank you for that amazing introduction. I I, I think thank after you. the introduction, I should just be done, right? Like we should we we should just be okay with that. Like wow, who was that? <laughs> but so, you know, everybody pay attention because you will, like I said, you will leave with a nugget or two today that you'll be able to immediately apply in your business. See, yeah. Diane's been an executive coach, right? And what she knows how to get right to it. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to literally get right to it. So you will have lots of notes. And Diane, as you remember, you know, we let people uh, ask some questions. So I yep. might interrupt once or twice. Yep. You're good with that. All good. All okay, good. We love I, engagement. I, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. So, and by you, I, I mean, Damien, and I mean, all of you that joined us. So here's what I want to do. I want to set the scene. And I want you to imagine that this is you, right? So I want you to imagine that you are a consultant and that you've been consulting for years and you're flat broke and you're frustrated and you're driving around wherever metro area that you live, in this case, it was Atlanta, in your little red pickup truck and you're just working hard and you're working and you're working and you're working and nothing seems to be breaking open for you. And so you make a decision to go to a marketing event and you walk into the room and there's 750 people who also own businesses sitting in that room. And on the stage are three people who've been chosen literally out of 10,000 members of this organization, hundreds of which who submitted to participate in this contest for marketer of the year. And there's three people up there and you decide, all right, maybe I can learn something from maybe one of these people, right? And so you sit down and you start to listen. And pretty soon, one particular person has grabbed your attention because they live in the same city as you. They're helping entrepreneurs to run and build huge businesses. As a matter of fact, They've helped one of the other participants to build a multi-million dollar business within an 18-month period. And all of a sudden, this person wins Marketer of the Year Award. 
and you go out into the hallway and you see this person, this winner, and you walk up to them and this is exactly what you do. You, you don't tap them on the shoulder. You bang them on the shoulder and you say this, I want to talk to you. I want to work with you. I'll, I'll catch you later. And off you go. That's exactly what the situation was a few years ago when I won Marketer of the Year and Casey Graham, who I'm going to tell you a little bit more about, was in the audience. That's exactly what happened. He saw me win the award. I was standing in the hallway. And if you, if you, <laughs> you don't know Casey, but Casey's this high energy guy. He's this bald dude. He's, a, he's, he's probably 15, 20 years younger than me. And he literally bangs me on the shoulder, says that, and runs off. And I'm like, who is this guy? So he actually did find me later. And Casey was working with small startup churches. When I say small startup churches, guys, I'm talking about churches in community centers. Not these mega churches that you see on TV, not... Robert Schuler, I know that dates me. Joel, you know, whoever all these guys are now, right? I don't know all their names. It's not a Joyce Myers. It's not, you know, somebody like that that's a televangelist that's on TV. These were small startup churches in community centers, in little places where he could, they could find to rent space or people would give them space. And he's consulting with these churches. So Casey comes up to me and he says, hey, I've heard about this continuity thing while I'm here, and I think I want to do continuity. And so I said to him, Casey, this is exactly what I said to him. It won't work. He said, why not? I said, well, what do you want to charge? $97 a month. He already had it kind of laid out, right? $97 a month to these startup community churches. I said, how's that going to work? I said, first of all, they don't have any money. They don't have any people coming in. The, the minister, preacher, whatever, pastor, whatever the right word is, is going to have to go to the board to get permission to spend $97 a month with you. And it's none of this money's going back in his pocket. I said, this is not totally not going to work. He looked me straight in the eye and he said this. He said, Diane, I want to work with you and I'm going to hire you. But if you don't believe in me and if you don't believe this is going to work, I'll find somebody else. And I said, okay, okay. If you feel that committed and you want to work with me and you believe that, then I've told you what I think. Let's rock. And that's how we started our affiliation with Casey and I. Um, I'm honored to tell you that Casey is now a, a cherished friend. He's a very successful business owner, which I'll tell you a little bit more about. Even all these years later, anytime I get on anything with Casey, anytime I'm in a room with Casey, he gives me the credit for his success, uh, which is not true. He did the work. He did a lot of work. We did it together. And I'm very proud of everything that he's accomplished since. So let me tell you a little bit about kind of how that works and, and where, what he's doing now. So what did we do? We launched a continuity program. And when I say continuity, I'm in membership, right? So every single month, every church that he had was paying him $97 a month and he was providing services. He was providing information. He was providing them with things that they could use in their congregation, right? Here's the thing. You guys all think right now that you have to have everything lined up perfectly in order to start. Oh my gosh, I don't have this. This isn't finished yet. This isn't complete. He launched this thing without a website. Let me say that again. He launched this without a website. That means he didn't have an app. He didn't have anything fancy. It was a landing page. People registered for this webinar and they got on. Here was the interesting thing. When we got everything situated and, he, and we knew what the offer was, Casey said to me, okay, I'm going to start making phone calls. I said, phone calls for what? He goes, well, I'm just going to call my, my people, my, you know, my, my, my consulting clients and, and put them on. I said, no, you're not. We're going to do a webinar. He said, what? I said, we're going to do a webinar. Now, he had done webinars before, but he had never sold on a webinar. So this was like a totally new idea to him. I'm like, no, 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 no. It'll take you a, a month of Sundays to get enough people to make any money doing this thing. So we we get on the webinar and this is kind of a funny story, right? We I'm so business oriented. I get on the webinar and we get ready to start. And he says, let us pray. And I went, what? Oh, that's right. He's, he's dealing with these churches, right? 
So, <laughs> so it was that, that, that paradigm shift, right? So we decided we were going to launch at $79 with charter members. And that day he put 39 people in at $79 on the webinar. Now, I was pretty excited. He was like, yeah, we're not, you know, we're not where we want to be. Well, within a two week period with the follow up and with the marketing that we did, now the price has raised, right? The price has gone up. It's now 97 bucks. He put in an additional 79 people. Ladies and gentlemen, if you add 79 and 39, that's over 100. I don't have the number right in front of me, but at 79 or 97 bucks a month, he's at six figures. Was it complicated? No, because we didn't make it complicated. Casey had a 94% retention rate 12 months into the program. He never fell below 75%. And that, just so that's you impressive. know, yeah, average is about 40, 50. Casey felt bad about his 75% retention rate. Do you want to know why he had such a high retention rate? His secret sauce. This is the key to anything that you do in your business. What's the secret sauce? What's the thing that sets you apart that makes you different? Now, guys, it doesn't have to be some big fancy thing, right? For Casey, part of it was his personality. But here's the piece for Casey. And I'm going to tell you what it was for two other clients that I helped do the same thing in very different industries. So you don't think, oh my gosh, I, I can't do that, right? So when I said to Casey, why are these guys going to pay you $97 a month and continue to pay you $97 a month? He said to me, that's easy. I was like, okay, I was all ears too, right? All ears. I said, what is it? He said, it's the giving talk. I said, what in the world are you talking about, right? Like I go to church, but giving talk wasn't language that I use. He goes, you know, Diane, when the, when the preacher's up there and they're, they're, they don't do this anymore, right, with post-COVID, but pre-COVID, they hand the baskets around, they hand the offering around, right? Put your money in, put your envelope in, whatever. And he said, during that time, these guys don't know what to say. They're like blubbering idiots, up behind the you know the, the 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 platform and they don't know what to say and they say all the wrong things and it costs them a bunch of money he said for me it's easy i can do it in 15 minutes and we'll give them one every single week they'll never leave and i'll be jig if he wasn't right <laughs> that's why they stay they did not want to have to write that giving talk so every week in the membership area he just put it up there and they stayed that was really the key now for a lot of you, you're like, well, that's great, Diane. You told us this big secret, but I don't have a giving talk, right? But you have something. You have something that sets you apart. For some of you, it's your personality. For some of you, it's some little thing that you can add to your program, something you already have that people absolutely love. Could be a bonus that people buy the thing because they want the bonus. That's okay, right? What's the thing that sets you just a little bit apart? It doesn't have to be something that's like life shattering, right? It's a giving talk. And I'm, again, I'll share with you a couple of the other ones that, when I finish um, talking to you about Casey. So Casey, 12 months, literally, I have an email that I was going to, I could have prepared a PowerPoint. We did this kind of on a short notice deal. So I didn't, I didn't get y'all a PowerPoint, but I have an email from Casey, literally 12 months exactly to the day that we started and this is what it says it's let me find it i've got it i wrote it down here 12 months diane we're at one hundred and forty-seven thousand five hundred dollars per month in revenue 12 months to the day why because he remained focused in on this one thing he was doing he called it giving rocket right that's all he did for 12 months he didn't start expanding. He didn't start adding other, you know, continuity programs and all that. For 12 months, that was his one focus. Let's build this thing to a million bucks by the end of 12 months, right? And he did it because he had that focus. Then at the end of that year, he did start to expand. He did something called Preaching Rocket. Now, here's the... Here's where you can start to really leverage and scale. 
He's now got a list. He's got people who are buying from him. Here's a key. Here, here's a nugget. If you guys don't remember anything else I say tonight, remember this. Ready? My, some of you might want to write this down. A buyer is a buyer is a buyer. I know that's like, you're all looking at me like I have three heads. Like right? Your faces are like, Rrr? people who buy from you will continue to buy from you if you continue to give them things they, they check this word out, they want. Not things they need. Nobody buys anything they need. We all, there's about five things we need in life. The rest are things we want. Give them what they want. Sell them what they want and also give them the things that, that they need, right? But don't sell them what they need. Sell them what they want. And that's what he continued to do. Preaching Rocket was the next thing. Now he's got momentum. Now he has people. Now he has eyes on what he's doing. He's built this excitement with these 100 plus people that's continued to grow. Obviously, if you went to 147,000 a month, he's got more than 100, right? He sold, when he launched Preaching Rocket, he sold 58 memberships in 48 minutes. And he sold out of 200, which was his max, in one day. Why? Momentum, excitement, eyeballs, the list. That's another key that I'm talking to you about right now. The list is critical. He had people who loved him, like Damien. Like you guys all love Damien, right? That's how Casey is, Mr. Personality. People love him, unlike me, right? It's like a whole different deal, <laughs> Right. But that oh, was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that was what happened. Now, here's the really exciting part. Casey continued to build continuity slash membership. Call it what you want. Right. Everybody has. I'm old school, so I still call it continuity or I could be really old school and use till forbid. And Damien and I'd be the only one to know what I'm talking about. Right. <laughs> we we ding the credit card till they forbid us to do it. That's how that's what, what I started 30 years ago. That's what we called it. He sold five years of continuity, membership, really focusing in, building that thing, building a couple of other brands inside of that that were a million bucks, right? Sold the company for multiple millions at the end of five years and walked away. Walked away. He had multiple offers, but until he got one where he could completely walk away from the company, here's the other really cool thing. Casey had a, a partner. Her name is Renee. Um, that was with him through this whole deal. And she started off just working for him. And he actually, when the buyout happened, she got part of the buyout. And now that Casey's continuing to do other things, which I'll tell you about here in just a minute, Renee has stayed with him. And it's a really amazing friendship, partnership. He's got some other partners that he does some other things with. But I was always just so impressed that he shared the wealth with her. They both walked away and then Casey's crash sort of happened. He didn't know what to do with himself, right? He's, he, he's got multiple seven figures, got this great check, but he's young, right? He's, he's built this amazing house uh, here in Cumming, Georgia on, a, on 35 acres. He's got a lake. He's got a son and a daughter, um, a beautiful wife whose name is also Casey, which I always laugh about. Um, and he's built this amazing property, doing pretty much what he, whatever he wanted to do, but he didn't know what his next thing was. And I watched him struggle. I watched him try to do some consulting, and I watched him try to do some, some of these other things. And I could tell that, that he wasn't happy, and he wasn't really finding his spot. And my phone rang one day, and it was Casey. And I picked it up, and he said, hey, I'd like to book an hour with you. I want to talk to you about a new idea that I have, and I'd like your opinion. By the way, one of the other cool things that Casey and I did with when he launched this thing and went from zero to six figures in, in 90 days is he said, Diane, I want to, I, we've, we've done this right. He said, I want to, how do we, how do we show people? And so he and I actually put a course together um, based on what we did. It was just a case history of, of what he did. And I was really honored uh, that he asked me to do that. And Casey's the guy who's, who's really good about sending thank you notes and um, twice he sent me thank you notes, one for doing the course with him and the second one for what I'm about to tell you. And uh, I told him, I, it's probably been a year ago, I was on a call with him and I said, you know, I have those, a picture of those on my phone. I carry it with me. 
um, they mean that much to me. And he's like, you do not. I said, yeah, I do. He's like, send it to me. Five minutes later, I texted it to him. He was like, oh my gosh. Um, so there's, there's so much more to all of this for me than, you know, the money that I make from coaching people and doing that. It's, it's the satisfaction of watching him grow this and, and those thank you cards just um, I, I, you know, they, they just touched my heart. So anyway, there's a little piece of Diane for you. Um, so he, when he called me, he said, look, I have this idea. He said, you know, one of the things that, that all these membership programs that are out there are struggling with that we struggled with was collections, right? So there's a certain number of people every month whose credit cards don't go through. And I said, yeah, makes perfect sense to me. And he said, so my idea is I want to start the company that goes into companies that have um, membership programs and I want to do the collections. And I thought, wow, right up your alley, right? And he said, but I want to do it different, Diane. I don't just want to do it mechanically. I don't just want to have emails and stuff going out. I want a mixture of technology and personal touch. And that's very much Casey. And so I spent an hour with him. We went over a bunch of things and you know, I did a little coaching and consulting with him. And he launched a company that's now called Gravy Solutions. It's gravysolutions.io. Here's the really cool thing. So that so I wrote some of this down. Um, Gravy Solutions recovered your failed payments fast. That's sort of the byline. Um, his goal when he and I don't remember what year he started it, but his goal here's an interesting thing, right? We all talk about how much money we want to make. Casey's goal, and if you go to his website, you'll see this is on there. His goal is to give $1 billion back to his clients by the end of this year. You want to know where they are right now? I just went and got the, the number yesterday. $726,646,000. Bravo. What's amazing is to, that I, because I've been a part, not a part of it, but I've been watching him, the exponential growth that's happened, right? It's like a little bit and then a little bit. And then there's these big chunks that have started to happen as he's continued to, to run the company. Um, and, and here's the other thing that you'll see on the website. If you go, it says gravy recovers 30% more failed payment revenue in less time than software alone we get back what tech alone misses. And so that now is his secret sauce, right? So he took what we did in Giving Rocket, the same principles and applied it to this new company. Same principles. His goal now isn't to do six figures in 90 days. His goal now isn't to do a million dollars in a year. It's to give back a billion dollars to his clients totally different using the exact same building blocks, the exact same foundation, the exact same principles in his business. That's an important point. There's a lot of fancy stuff out there. There's a lot of tactics that you're going to see. There's a lot of bells and whistles. Don't get BSOS, bright, shiny object syndrome. It'll kill you, right? The basics work. They've worked for 30 years. They're going to continue to work. I'm not saying don't do technology. I'm not saying don't jump in on some of the cool new things that are happening in the world today, right? And in business. What I am saying is when you start and you build this thing, build your foundation in such a way that it doesn't matter whether it's these fancy, tricky, tactical things are in your program or not. Build the foundation and then add those things because the foundation is the same today. And, and I know this isn't sexy, right? This is, but it's the truth. The foundation is the same today as it's been for a hundred years, probably more than that, using good direct response marketing techniques and strategies. Here's what I don't want you guys to think. Well, I can't do this because I'm, I don't have, I'm, I'm not doing continuity, all right? I did the exact same thing for a guy by the name of Chris McClatchy, who was actually lived two doors down from me when I lived in Florida for eight years. Chris was a, it was, is a real estate, he's retired now at 50, but he was a real estate investor. He was a, also a lawyer. Don't hold that against him. Really good guy. Uh, we never, well, okay, we did hold it against him, but you know, that's a neighbor thing. Um, 
he came to me and said, Diane, I want to do, I want to teach, I want to speak, and I want to do the things that you're doing in your industry in real estate. And so, and I'm not going to go into his, his story, but essentially what we did was we took what, what Chris was doing, which was a little different, and we made courses. Secret sauce. Ready? He put all of the courses that he sold on iPads refurbished iPads that he bought from Apple for $97. Do you, in an industry of real estate investing, in an industry of informational products where it's not uncommon to get 25% return rate, right? And some are higher. Guess what his return rate was? Nobody ever returned his stuff. Why? Because at the <laughs> very least, they wanted the iPad, right? I mean, it was amazing to me. Not one time did we get a return. In the time that I was involved, and I was involved with him for a couple of years in his business, secret sauce, right? You get an secret iPad in sauce. the mail, you're going to send it back. So that was his secret sauce. Let me let me give you one more example, and then I'm going to stop for a minute, open it up before I get into the lessons that you should take from these stories. Bill Goff had an all-state insurance agency. He was a little bit like Casey. I was in a coaching group with him, and he banged me on the shoulder during a, a networking thing and said, I want to talk to you, and off he went. Right shoulder. I know I need better shoulders, right? That maybe that's why my shoulders are I'm having problems now, right? All this banging on my shoulders has been happening over the years. So Bill had a very successful all state insurance agency in Alabama. I can't remember the city now. Um, shame on me. And he wanted to start a business where he was helping the other all state agents, not insurance as a whole, just all state agents, grow their businesses and build million dollar books. That was his goal. And so <laughs> he, we started, and I kind of told him the same thing. We should not be starting this thing with a live event. That's the wrong thing. We should develop courses. He said, Diane, I want to do a live event. So that's what we did. Again, me being a little bit of a doubting, doubting Diane, um, I said, okay, let's, let's rock. And so his very first event, we put 75 people in the room and he walked out with net, not gross, net after having paid the speakers, after having paid the hotel, after having paid me, <laughs> um, six figures at the end of that event, which we did in about a 90 day time period with him as well. His secret sauce was, it, it was really masterminds done for you and all that. But I will tell you, Bill's secret sauce was that he was one of them. He, I call it an usum, right? They related to him because he had developed success in his own business. And those other Allstate agents, the ones who knew him, obviously were, were very intrigued. The ones who didn't know him could very easily go look up and see what kind of success he had. And that was really the appeal for him. That His secret sauce was the success he had already had in the, in the Allstate insurance business. I will tell you, he has since sold um his we went to a million and a half dollars with him in 18 months um he sold his insurance agency to a, a a woman who used to work for him who's now running that and he's he's really stepped back a lot even from the informational side of the masterminds and the done for you and all that and has a a, a kind of a lieutenant if you will a vice president that does most of the day-to-day -day. again he's got a family kids beautiful home on the lake boat, the whole, all the toys. But uh, so three very different situations. And yet the, 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 the common denominator is the, the baseline of the businesses were basically the same. And there was a secret sauce, all very different. But those were really some of the keys. So let me take a breath and see if, if there's questions or anybody has anything specific that you want to ask. And then if not, either way, I'll, I'll talk about some of the lessons and things that you can draw from that. Katie Fletcher, lead us off with a good question. Oh boy. Okay. So what comes to mind is I, I've had a pretty good retention, uh, very good retention for about, I don't know, eight, 10 years. And, um, <clears throat> And my so-called, and I'm not sure this is true now, my secret sauce has been uh, my background in publishing as it relates to mobile apps. Um, and it's been my service. 
you know, when they, when they email me, we get it done, whatever it is that they need to get it done. So they, my clients have great confidence that Katie will solve it. Okay. My, my problem is I'm up to here and I, I know I probably need, I can maybe retain that secret sauce by getting someone else to help me, but I'm sure. sort of stuck. And yeah. I, I'm stuck on my mindset's a little stuck on, I don't think I can bring anybody on. I don't have time to train them and either they won't know, you know, that's classic okay. stuff. Okay. I love this question. So I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you a, 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 a sort of a graphic. It's not graphical, but it'll a, a visual. And let's see if she's more successful at this than I have tried to be with you for eight years. 10 years. <laughs> so so oh, yeah. here, here's the thing that I'll tell you, Katie, is you're, you're stuck. Yeah. And in le- until you do something different, you're going to be stuck exactly where you are. So it's time for Katie to leverage. This is hard because you're a control freak. How do I know you're a control freak? Because you're an entrepreneur, because you're on this call, right? We're all control okay. freaks. Mm-hmm. I can do this better. It's my company. What if somebody screws it up? So let me give you this analogy. My guess is that Katie does things to this level right? That's the top notch. I'm the best there is. I can do this like nobody else's business because my, and my people love me because of it. Your okay. client's expectation is probably down here. Okay. So you've got what I call the gap. You've got this huge gap and stuff that you're doing for people and they love you for it, but you're doing all this extra work that you wouldn't necessarily have to do. Now, if you brought somebody on and yeah, let me just be, let me just be up front. It's going to take time, energy, and money to train somebody. It's going to cost you way more time, energy, and money not to, but here's the thing. So here's you, here's your client expectation. Okay. If the person you train is 70% of what you do, cause they're never going to be as good as Katie, right? Let's just, but look, no, I, and I'm being serious, right? I'm- So 70%, let's drop down from the top. Let's drop down 30%. Look at that. There's still a gap. So even at 70%, you're still over-delivering. The clients are still happy. They're ecstatic because they are still getting more than they thought they were ever going to get. And guess what? Katie's time has been freed up to go what? get more business, right. bring in more app clients, make more money, which guess what? Yeah. That means you can have another person come in and help you do something else inside of your business. Now, it's going to take planning. It's going to take some time and it's going to be scary. Mm-hmm. But if you know that that person, then you, you're training them. So you're going to train them to do a great job. If you know that the expectation is still being exceeded by your clients, does it matter if you're doing it or somebody else is doing? Absolutely not. Yeah, absolutely not. When are you going to go out and find a person and start training them to bring them on to help you next week? I have a, I have a person, I have a VA, maybe everybody, a lot of people on the call have VAs. Uh, Mine is in the Philippines and I haven't really leveraged her. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sort of, stuck thinking I want someone near where I am. And you know what? Don't be stuck with that. I think that's Mm -hmm. a great thing. It's your business. You get to make the decisions based on your business, how you want to run it. And Mm -hmm. if you want somebody close or you want somebody in the U S somebody who works the same hours that you work, right. That's Mm -hmm. your prerogative. Maybe English is the first language is important. There are lots of things to consider. Here's what I know. If you ask me what I, one thing that I would change about my business, if you ask me what that one thing is, I will tell you the exact same thing every time. I would start everything I did sooner. I would have hired sooner. I would have started doing mastermind sooner. Everything I do that I've done in my career, I would have done sooner. Why? Because what's going to happen when I hired my first full-time person, oh my gosh, I, 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 I was stressed. And, and, and actually, Casey taught me this. The reason you're stressed is because you look at it and you say, oh my gosh, I have to pay this person $50,000. I'm making it up a number. Pick 20, whatever the number is, right? And you go, oh my gosh, right? $50,000. Well, guess what? Divided by 12, 
let's use 60 because that's an easy number. That's 5,000 bucks next month. Well, divide that by four. That's a thousand dollars a week. You don't have to go make 50,000. You only have to bring in an extra thousand a week to cover it, right? The other thing is you don't have to bring them on full time. You can bring them on part time, right? So there's a lot of different options of ways that you can do this that will fit into what you're doing. But I will promise you this. If you don't do it, 90 days from now, six months from now, 12 years from now, 12 year, 12 months from now, your income's going to be the same. You're going to be more frustrated, more burned out, and wondering what the hell you're doing because you're not starting to leverage. You've got to start to use leverage in your business if you're going to grow and change. Now, there are people who say, and you're not one of them, but there are people who say, I'm good. Like, I want to do all the work. And that's fine, but that's not the situation that Katie's in. I'd like to add to the conversation because it's a really, it's, it's, it's a lesson that I learned at a very young age. And so you currently leverage, Katie, all, all of you that are on here that are a part of our mobile apps program, you're leveraging Go Mobile to build, design, publish, and all of that, right? So you do get leverage. When I first started my career in 1990, selling credit card processing terminals, I was the only guy that thought that I could sell it the best. So I didn't have a sales team. It's when I realized that I could hire a few people that could not sell as good as me, but I can get over that, that suddenly I tripled my sales. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. I thought for months that nobody could sell better than me, but instead I hired four people that sold half as good as me and I doubled my numbers. And so once I learned that, I, I guess it's been kind of like my good, bad, and indifferent because my, my, my partner, Ian Welsh, would tell you that, you know, as we started scaling and growing and growing, every problem that we had, I would just throw bodies at. I would just hire more people because I learned so early, literally in my first year in my career, that when I put more bodies on the detail, I expand and grow. When I put more bodies on the detail of the areas that I'm not good at, especially as a young 20 year old, there was so much I didn't know. I didn't graduate from high school. I dropped out of 15 and a half. What do you think I didn't know about so many things at 18 years old in business? Many. And because of the good experience of hiring people not as good as me to do something that I thought I was the best at, doubling my business and going, wow, that worked. I was okay with hiring people for the financial side, yep. hiring people for the admin side, hiring people to to be able to push the paper a lot better than I could, right? And so leverage is key. I love this part, this topic, Diane. I'm glad we got in it. And, and I'm glad I picked on you, Katie, to, to expose it. Because here we have, for everybody else on this call, we have someone that's been selling apps for over 10 years, who's probably the best in my community that I have ever witnessed, right? And that's actually what's holding you back. Just yep. a tad bit. And let me add, there are other ways to leverage besides bodies. It, and for you, Katie, my guess is, I don't know you as well as Damien does, but my guess is it's a combination, right? So there's probably things that Katie's handling now that could be automated, right? There could be a frequently asked questions place on your website that you that you push people to in a in a very positive, light way instead of them emailing Katie or calling Katie, right? So there's automation. Mm -hmm. There's there's system, there's systems, which you may be good at a lot of entrepreneurs need a little help with their systems and 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 in setting some of those things up but by systemizing many times you can you can leverage in ways that don't require delegation which is really the people and then the, the fourth way that a lot of people never think about is what can you eliminate right what are you doing that's not bringing in now money what are you doing that's that's that that your time benefit ratio is in a negative right and there's probably mm -hmm. some of those things there's probably some holes in your bucket that mm -hmm. you could plug up or yep. eliminate so there are, yep. there are other ways to leverage and, and damien's right one of the biggest leverage that you have obviously is using go mobile systems but right um I, I see a big year for you if you will if you'll if you'll step out on faith and take that step thank you diane thank you're you you're welcome excellent anybody else can you see why I recruited Diane Conklin to the Go Mobile Solutions Executive Management Team? Can anybody see that? Is there is, is it obvious today? <laughs> <laughs> obvious. Yeah. Right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So let me, I, I kind of want to, what I want to do is kind of do a little synopsis of the lessons that, that I think you should take from what I've talked about to this point, right? 
for your own business. The first thing I'm going to say to you, and hopefully you already got this, is focus. There's a great book. It's called The One Thing. If you haven't read it, I would highly suggest that you do. If you're not a reader, I'm going to give you the synopsis right now. You ready? This is the synopsis of the entire book. And I have it right here on a, on a three by five card on my second monitor. Yes, I'm at a desktop with two 26 inch monitors. Three by five card. Right three on, by boy. five card. Handwritten. That's, that's the Dan Kennedy coming out of there. There you go, baby. <laughs> and, it's bit, and, it, and it it stays right here. And I look at this every day when I start my day. And this is what it says. What's the one thing that I can do? And by doing it, everything else is easier or unnecessary. What if when you sat down at your desk every morning, you ask yourself that question and you did just the thing that you needed to do that day and then you walked away from work. How amazing would that be, right? I'm going to repeat it one more time. What's the one thing that I can do today that by doing it, everything else is either easier or unnecessary? It's a powerful question because most of you, this is going to make you mad. I don't care. I'm just telling you I don't care ahead of time. So, you know, it's going to make you mad. Most of you are addicted to a drug called busy. When I want you to be addicted to the drug called productive. Big difference between being busy and productive. When you stop being productive in your day on Monday, I want you to go do something else. Go for a walk. Go take a shower. Go spend an hour and watch a movie. Go read a book. Go call a friend. I don't care what you do, but when you feel yourself stop being productive, Stop sitting at your desk wasting time. Oh, is that my desk for 10 hours today? Great. How many of those hours were productive? Two. Well, what'd you do the other eight hours? Okay. So focus. If you never read the book, you got the gist of it. How was that for a synopsis? That that you save you save a ton of time. I mean, but I definitely agree. You definitely want to read that book because. I realized that there was a lot I was doing in my daily work life that really was unnecessary. When I read that book, it has you really looking at what you're doing right now, daily, weekly, monthly. And I guarantee everybody on this call, myself included still today, has plenty of stuff that they can dial in. Yep. Right? And that book really helped point that out. For sure. Every one of us. And and, And like you said, it's, it's that message, right? What's the one thing that I could do today that would make everything else unnecessary and or, you know, right. Easier. But then yeah. what's the one thing I could do this week? What's the one thing I can do this year? Right. You can actually piece that one thing. Yep. yep. But if you do it every day, it'll make a huge difference in your day. All right. Two, there's no magic. There's no magic topic or way to be successful. You're the magic. Every single one of you are the magic. Stop looking outside. Stop thinking that there's some magic formula that you're missing. There's a pill that you need to take. There's not. You're the magic because your people love you. And the people that are going to be attracted to you to do business with you, you're not for everyone. Trust me when I tell you. I am not for everybody, right? I'm too high energy. I'm too direct. I'm too whatever for some people. For somebody else, I'm not enough. And that's okay, right? I have a particular client base of people that that are attracted to the way I do things. And those are my people. Hang with those people. That's your magic. The magic is not outside of you. It's right in here. It's right in here. And you all have it. Every one of us have it, right? Absolutely. audience. Yep. Absolutely. Three, work within your strengths, within your strengths, get help for the rest. There's a great exercise by a guy named Dan Sullivan from Strategic Coach. And it's a, it's a four point quadrant in the top left. It's all the things that you're excellent at. There should be four or five of them, four or five in your entire business. Okay. In the top right is the things that you're good at, 
In the bottom left are the things that you're not good at and you don't enjoy doing. And in the bottom right are the things you suck at and you hate. There's going to be a big, long list of those <laughs> for, for a lot of us, right? The problem is most of you are spending time in the lower half of that, of that graph instead of the top half. Most of you have way too many things in your excellent category. You're not excellent at more than four or five things in your business. You're just not. None of us are, right? We don't have that capacity. For me, I will tell you really simply, It's I've narrowed it down to, there's either four or five, I'll, I'll get it, right? It's teaching, speaking, marketing, selling. That's it. Doing what I'm, like this right here, uh oh, Damien's going to have punctuality is a big one for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I am really good at being on time. Look, guys, I've been in business 30 years. I know a lot of stuff. Those are the four things that I focus on on a daily. I could do this for the next 10 years and never take a break. Like, I love this. I love teaching. I love coaching. I love helping you guys grow your businesses. It's, it's who I am, it's, it's inside of me, right? Now, I'm a really good event planner and I love it. But here's the here's the distinguisher for me. So that's in my good column, not my Katie, excellent column. Do you sense the Go Mobile Live 2024? Is that what we're sensing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're doing it, right? But here's how I distinguish it. At the end of the day, when I'm planning an event, I'm exhausted. I want to go to my hotel room, I want to order room service, and I don't want to talk to or see anybody. Like I need that time to, to regenerate. When I get off the when I get off this call tonight, when I get off the platform, when I've been training for three days, I'm like, woo, can I do some more? It energizes me, right? That's how I distinguish those two factors, right? Look, technology, I hate it. I suck at it. I'm no good at it. I need Derek to help me do everything in this company. I'm like, I couldn't even figure out how to load the damn calendars right? Or my email. He had to like walk me through this crap. So it's a tech company, but that ain't my, that ain't my forte. That's not why Damien brought me in, right? So knowing what you're good at and what your areas are, and then getting to the point, it's not going to happen overnight. It may not happen in a year, but getting to the point where you're working only in that upper quadrant, then getting to the point where you're only working in that upper left will change your life will change how you feel about your business, will change everything about what you're doing. So work within your strengths, get help for the rest. You don't have to hire people full time, okay? But get some help a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. Secret sauce, Casey's was the giving talk. Chris was the iPad and Bill's was, he was one of them. You all have that, it's your magic, it's your secret sauce. Figure out what it is. Here's a challenge. Either over the weekend or what, pick a day next week. Spend one hour. Just one hour. Block off an hour. Don't answer the phone. Turn your cell phone off. I know it's hard, but you'll, 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 you'll be okay. Take an hour of quiet time and think about what's my secret sauce? What's my magic? Why do people come to me instead of the next person? And when you figure that out, It'll be a eureka moment. It truly will be a eureka moment. And let me just put some of you at ease. Some of you, it's not going to happen in an hour. It's okay. Just keep working toward that progress. Just keep thinking about it. Just keep working toward what is the thing. And let your actions show you the way. There, there's nothing that irritates me more than people who sit around going, I don't know what my passion is. I don't know what my purpose is. Well, go do something and find out. Get off your butt, like go do something. It'll, you, the actions that you will, it'll follow you. Like take some action and, and move in that direction and you'll figure it out. So your secret sauce, get somebody to help you. Get a coach, get a mentor. You guys already have this built in, right? You're all, you're all with us. You already have this. You, you've got us here to help you. Utilize that. Get on these calls, ask questions. Let us help you. You cannot do this alone. Damien has had coaches and mentors his entire career. I have my first year in business. This is not the model I, I suggest, but my first year in business, I spent more in seminars and coaches and books and tapes than I made. 
not a great way to stay in business, okay? But it's necessary. You've got to have help. Pick a person that you admire. I don't care what field they're in. It doesn't even have to be a business person. They didn't get there on their own. None of us did. None of us did, okay? Be strategic. This is key. Start with the end in mind. What's the result that you want? And I know some of you are going to say, well, it's to make money, Diane. No, it's not to make money. What's the result you want? I want three new clients this week who, who purchase an app at X dollars. That's the result. The money is, 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 is going to come. But start with the end in mind and then make a plan. And backward plan from where you are today, all of your marketing and everything that you're going to do. Don't start from... I'm sorry, don't start from today and go forward. Start from, okay, at the end of this month, I want three new clients. How are you going to get there? And backward plan it. If you backward plan it and, and figure out everything you need to do to get those three clients, it'll work. If you start from today and try to go forward, you're going to be frustrated. I, I've, I've taught this backward planning thing for a long, long time. And it works if you'll, work, if you'll do it. Start from end of the month, I want three clients and then figure out what are the steps that you need, program it into your calendar every day or every third day or whatever it is that you're going to do to promote it and, and get it on a marketing calendar and then follow that plan, which was number seven, have a marketing plan. I call it a map, marketing action plan. It's not a marketing sit down and look at it plan. It's a marketing action plan. It's a map. I know nobody follows maps anymore. We have GPSs. That's fine. Follow your GPS, right? Most of you spend more time planning your vacation or your trip to the mall on your GPS than you do your business. I know I just made you mad again. I don't even care. <laughs> That's the second time, right? At least the second time. You've got to spend some time figuring out where you want your business to go and making that plan. Marketing action plan. It's a map, okay? Or a GPS, however you want to look at it. Implement. You've got to implement. This is the action piece, right? You got. I want you taking massive, focused action. Don't overthink stuff. Don't sit around and go, oh, geez, oh, my golly. Oh, what if this and what if that? And Oh, no. Just do it. You're going to have times when stuff doesn't work. It's okay. It's not, you're not a failure. Look, here's the great thing about being a marketer. In the real world, people would say, oh, well, that's a failure. No, we were just testing. <laughs> we were just testing, right? It didn't work. It was just a test. Just a test. All right. So don't overthink it, right? Do. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. You're going to make a mistake. You, you are. We all have. And we're all still here to talk about it, right? Be a doer. Be an implementer. You've got to take action. Massive, focused, deliberate action. Nine, I got two more. Leverage. Leverage. We talked about it with Katie, right? Systemize, automate, delegate, eliminate. We could, I could, I could spend days talking to you about leverage, but you've got to leverage. You don't have to scale. You don't have to leverage if you want to be a solopreneur. I don't want to be a solopreneur. Like that's way too much work and pressure. And I, I don't want to do it on my, all on my own. Right. So you've got to leverage. You do not have to scale. If you don't want to scale to a million bucks, if you don't want to scale to a half a million dollar business, if you don't want to scale to a hundred thousand dollar business, then don't do it. It's your business. If you're, if you said right now, I want to make $60,000 a year working from home 10 hours a week, and that's your success, then that's your success. Build your business to that. Utilize leverage however you can and never scale your business. That's okay because it's yours. And I want you guys to all own that. Don't do it because Damien said, or because I said, or because somebody, you know, said you should, oh, everybody should have a million dollar business. No, they shouldn't. It's not even practical that every, everybody didn't want that. And finally, continually optimize, continually test, continually evaluate, continually tweak. And you're going to do this because you're measuring. You can't optimize what you don't know exists. So you've got to measure, you've got to know your numbers. I know some of you hate your numbers. Well, that's somebody you can hire. That's somebody you can bring on and have somebody run reports for you and do all your numbers, but you have to know what they are. Do not abdicate the responsibility for this and do not put your head in the sand. Do not bury your head in the sand, okay? Optimize, you have to continually ask yourself, how can I make this better? 
what's the next thing that we can do? What's working well? What's not working as well as we want? What are the challenges that we're facing? What are the, That's how you continue to optimize your business. I hope that you guys can take something out of those 10 things and out of the stories and, and lessons that I gave you and make 2023 your best year yet. And then 2024, we'll come back and, and talk about doing it again. We'll hammer it again, right? That's right. By the way, those 10 are money. My favorite is leverage. My, my second favorite is secret sauce, right? Well, so would you like to talk about, do you want me to switch it to uh, sort of my new role? Yeah, let's do that. That's a great idea because, man, I would I would have to, uh, you know, if we if we stop this call without going there, then we, no. So I just want to, so that you guys know, you know, kind of what my vision is and, and why I'm here and and uh, and all that. Let me let me reiterate first of all that what I said in the beginning when we started the call, which is that it's an honor for me, and I've done a lot of things in my life and a lot of things in my career and a lot of business experience. But it was honored when Damien and I were were talking and and uh, we talked about this role. It's an honor for me to be a part of Go Mobile. It's a it's an honor for me to not only call Damien my friend, but to have him as a business associate and, and somebody that I'm now working very closely with on a daily basis. And it's an honor to be involved with this team. This is a, a very amazing team that he's put together. It's it's a reflection of him, but they're loyal, they're committed. It's a do whatever it takes kind of kind of situation. And so for me, I'm, you know. I'm a, I'm, I'm a team kind of gal and I've been out here on my own for a little while and it's, it's fun for me to be a part of a team again. You know, I, I grew up as a, as an athlete playing team sports and, and I've missed the camaraderie of that. And so um, I want to start by just saying that, that it's an honor, not only that, but it's an honor to be involved with all of you, you know, who are his clients, who are the loyal fan base, if you will, the people that have been with him for a while that continue to come to these over and over again. The honor is also for that. And I want you to understand that I mean that from the bottom of my heart. There's, you know, I'm very picky. You know, I'm 59 years old. I'll be 60 in August. I'm picky about what I do and who I work with um, in my career now. And, you know, what I give my time to, because uh, as, as I've gotten older, my priorities have changed. And um, I'm excited about what's happening for you guys. I'm excited what's happening inside the company that you guys will see us reveal over the course of the next few months. And some, some amazing opportunities that some of you may want to take advantage of. I will mostly be in the background. Damien will continue to be the face. Damien will continue to be the one that, that runs these happy hours. You probably won't even see me um, on a lot of these happy hours, but he will continue to be that. I will be in the background doing things, and most of you won't even know that I'm doing. Bringing my 30 plus years of direct response, project management, strategic business optimization, leverage growth, all the things that we've talked about, leadership and experience to help what is already an amazing company improve one to 3% every month. That's really kind of the, the piece that I have, right? It's 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 constant and never ending improvement, right? It's canine. It's it's that piece that that you hear about. But that's my goal. If we can improve one to three percent every month, month after month after month for the remainder of this year and then for years to come, <laughs> good Lord willing that I have that I have some more years left, right? Then there literally are hundreds, maybe even thousands of variations and ways that I can help make this happen and that we as a team, and when I say we as a team, I mean Damien's team plus you guys, right? Because some of you may, you know, get more involved with the company as 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 we grow and as, as things expand. But there literally are hundreds, thousands of ways and variations and little tweaks and things that we can do. And my job is to help find the best ones. My job is to help find the right ones, the ones that are, that we can optimize now and then the ones that will optimize later. And so for me, that's exciting because one of the things I love most is taking, you know, a little bit of experience over here that I learned and, and applying it over here and taking two things that I did over here, or one thing that I did and combining it and making it work in a different situation. Because while something worked somewhere doesn't mean it's going to work in the, you know, in a different situation all the time. But I think the other piece for me is supporting Damien and the team and you. And, and I want you to know that I am here to support each and every one of you. 
if you need something, if there's a frustration, if there's something that you feel like needs to be changed and you're not getting, you know, the response that you want, reach out to me. I'm, I'm here for each of you. I'm here for Damien. I'm here for the team so that you, Damien and the team have the best experience possible toward your success in your business. That's really the ultimate for me is that each and every one of you have the best experience toward success in your business as you move forward, whatever that means for you and however that looks for you. And for, for it's going to be different for almost all of you. The other thing I think is my big role is to keep us focused, to keep us focused on the current path that we're on so that we as a company don't get BSOS, right? There's so many things happening in the business world. There's so many things happening in apps and online and, and all these different things. You've heard about you know AI and all these different things that are happening right now. My job is to keep Damien focused, the company focused, so that we reach the goals that we've set for ourselves. And let's face it, we know that those are going to flex. They're going to change a little bit as we move through the year and as we get closer to the launch of these new things. But to, to keep us focused in on, is this the thing that we need to be working on now to get us to where we want to go so that we can serve? all of you in a bigger and better way. And look, let me just tell you guys, there's going to be some growing pains. I'm just going to be honest. There's going to be some growing pains. You're going to get frustrated with me. You're going to get frustrated with Damien. You're going to have a team member that you think, ah, they didn't answer me soon enough or whatever. That's going to happen. And I want to acknowledge that up front and let you know that if it does happen, you have an open door to contact us, to let us know and for and I hope that you will be patient enough. I had a great experience earlier this week with a challenge where I had a client who Damien said, reach out. And I did. And I, and I thanked him, as I would thank all of you, for being patient enough to give us the opportunity to make something right. Don't go away mad. As my dad would say, just go away. But I don't want you to go away mad or go away, right? I want you to give us an opportunity when things screw up. And they will. It's it's life. It's business. It's It's people, right? So that's the challenge I would like to give all of you is that, you know, give us the opportunity to make things right when there's something that you're not 100% happy with. But, you know, that's, you know, Damien may have a different idea, but that's kind of the way I see things. And, and again, I just want to make sure, encourage all of you to, you know, have open communication with us, have an open dialogue, let us know what it is that you want and, and the things that, that you would like to see us, you know, take maybe faster steps toward. Um, I'm not going to promise you that we can always do everything that you ask in the time frame that you want it. Um, it will depend upon what our goals are and, and where we are, but customer service and, and serving you is the number one thing that we're here for. And so, um, you know, thank you guys for your time tonight. I hope you got something out of this. Um, it was, as I said, it's my honor always to be put in front of, of anybody, but certainly in front of Damien's crew and, and, and group and, and people that uh, love and care about him as much as I do. So thank you. Well, Diane, that was amazing. And, you know, you said if I could add anything, if I wanted to change it, no, that was beautiful. And I think the team would probably agree. They're all on here as well. And all of you guys, I mean, you know, for the last three years, you know, call it COVID years, call it like the last three years, just kind of been, we've been floating around, but we are ready to go big and to go big. And Katie, I, I guess what I'm proving to you is that, you know, you do the things you need, you bring the talent on, you, right? You, you bring the talent on so that you can level up. And that, right. that's what you're doing, right? I mean, this, this I hear is you. leading by example right here, right? You got it. You got it. So I'm going to do a little bit of a different lightning round for Diane because uh, she was on as a happy hour guest over a year ago now. And so she already shared what the best advice she's ever received. But what I'm going to now ask and flip that a little bit would be, what would you say is the best advice in the last calendar year that you got from someone really close to you um, or that you learned or that you discovered? So it's a new discovery within the last 12 months that you discovered that's going to change the way you do everything you do or whatever. Up to you. You know what? I'm going to give you something that I've learned in the last two weeks. Ha! And and you'll appreciate this and you'll you'll get it probably more than most. But um, things are going to happen in your life and in your business. And when they do, ask for help. And not in a, not from a place of weakness. And then let other people genuinely help you. Let them love on you. Let them take care of you. 
and let them help you in any way that honestly you need help with. Um, it's a tough, it, it's a tough thing for me. I'm pretty independent. I've been on my own for a long time and, uh, it's hard sometimes to, to, to ask for help and then to take it. Um, and you know, listen to your gut when your gut tells you not to do something, don't do it. Uh, <laughs> but you know, that's the thing that I would tell you is do what's important to you. Let people help you along the way. Let people love on you. Let people take care of you in your business and in your life, because you can't separate the two guys. You, you might think you can, but you can't. And, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, Damien's been a part of that in the last few weeks with me. And, uh, that's, that's the thing that I will tell you, you know, I, I've, uh, I've been in business and, and been around for a long time and, and your life is going to shift. And, uh, when it does go with it and, uh, just, just, just be open to, to what it brings. Beautiful. Awesome. Well, Latoya, can, can I, can I, or no, you, you sent it to me privately. Latoya, give me a thumb up. I'm okay. Yes, you can. All right. So Diane, you're going to love this. So Latoya has been with us for many, many, many years. And when I first met her, she told me she had one goal, one big BHAG goal. And she's an air traffic controller previously because her big goal was to retire. And she just told me she is now officially retired. Latoya, congratulations. Congratulations. That woo, is awesome. woo. That, that, Thank that, you guys and, so much. And that is why I do what I do. Personally, yep. I mean, hearing these stories, even if they are six, seven years down the road, it's why I do this. So thank you, LaToya. Thank you, uh, Diane. Listen, I'll tell you what, I am excited about watching you do these calls because there's a new, you know, it's it's like Leanne, we put her on the front line to do these calls too. Everybody loves Leanne too, right? And like, so all of a sudden, you know, we've got more ability to teach, inspire and coach with members of our team, with, with the community. You know, this is just amazing. Just watching you do it again, it was, it was absolutely amazing. What I would like everybody to do now to sign off for Diane, usually I tell everybody to give a big woo and a big, big hug. But see, this is different. Diane's not going anywhere. Usually it's like, give a big hug, sign off. Now I want you to give Diane a big Go Mobile community welcome. Welcome to the community. Go ahead and unmute, go crazy, go crazy. Bring it. Welcome, Diane. Thank you. Welcome, Diane. Welcome. Thank you. Glad you're here. Thank you so much for being here tonight, Diane. We appreciate everything. Great wisdom. Continued success to you. And welcome to Go Mobile. Thank you. Great stuff. Thank you. That's music to my ears. What do you think? Thank you. That's great. Thank you, guys. I'm, 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 I'm touched. You're home. You're home. Everybody, listen, it's been a fantastic happy hour session. So thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for your attention. Have a fantastic weekend. Go out there and sell a few apps. Let's talk about it next week and share some celebrations. Huh? Go mobile or Diane, what do we do? Go home. <laughs> All, right. All right, everybody. Have Thank a great you. weekend. Thanks, See guys. You next week.